All right. Wonderful. Welcome to today's Skill Up. My name is Emily Spranger. I'm an academic learning specialist at National University. I am joined by Dr. Sarah McHugh today, and we will be discussing establishing yourself as a thought leader. Dr. Sarah McHugh came to me. She had this great idea, and in partnership, we worked together to uh, highlight all of her great ideas about establishing yourself as a thought leader, but also intertwine in the NU resources that uh, are applicable to what she's talking about today. So a few norms for our Zoom room. We are recording today's session. We will send you a copy of today's presentation. And to all those who registered, we will send you a copy of the presentation. Uh, a PDF of the PowerPoint, and then I will highlight some of the NU resource, resources and links to you in the email as well. For the best flow of our conversation today, we're going to ask you to participate in the chat and to ask questions in the Q&A, and we'll get to those as time permits. And the last piece is we do have scrolling subtitles available to you. So please, if you want to enable them, you're welcome to do so, depending on your viewing pleasure. That being said, uh, those are my norms for today. And I'm going to go ahead and get this ball rolling today with a few questions. We are absolutely delighted for to have you join us in the discussion of how to establish yourself as a thought leader. We wanted to start by asking a few get to know you questions. So get ready to use the chat and I will go ahead and, and announce it to you, Dr. McHugh, just so you can make sure you're able to, to hear some of these responses. There are no right or wrong answers. So please share in the chat your answer to, what is your dream job? And I'll put that in the chat too. What is your dream job. If you are so inclined to share, please go ahead and pop that in the chat for us. Oh, one that brings peace. Love that response. Thank you for that. Again, what is your dream job? Research, researcher, professor, online college instructor. Wonderful. A UN ambassador. Hello. And professor, lots of really great dream job options here, psychologists, nonprofit industry, a comfortable life, one that provides a comfortable life. Wow, I love that. Someone wants to be a, th a part-time therapist and owner of a and b in south of France. I think you might be on to the right idea there. Wonderful, a job that makes a difference in others' lives. Thank you all so much. Such wonderful aspirations from the group. Okay, you're welcome to still pop that in the chat. But my next question is, where do you search for jobs? And there can be several options of where you search for jobs. In the past, I'll share while you guys are putting your thoughts into the chat. In the past, I've looked at Indeed. Oh, several people just popped in the chat. Indeed, LinkedIn, word of mouth or online. ZipRecruiter, word of mouth. I mean... I feel like we've all heard that expression, it's who you know, right? So making those connections. Thank you so much for that. My next question, we have a few more attendees moving into the room, so let me admit them quickly. Sorry about that pause. My next question for you is, do you attend conferences? And this is a simple yes or no in the chat, yes or no. Oh, so many yeses, Dr. McHugh. And Another one said, no, but I want to. Okay, wonderful. Wow, thank you so much for all of your participation. Okay, my next question for you is, how do you use LinkedIn? Um, I know some people mentioned they search for jobs on LinkedIn, but how do you use LinkedIn? Some people don't use it, okay. Lots of people chiming in saying, I don't use it, not as effectively as I should. Some people saying networking or they've done some classes. Really great comments here coming in, sharing posts, news, uh, connection, research. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Okay. 
really appreciate it. Some people say re use it rarely, maybe a few classes, professional networks or connections, fun scrolling. I like that. <laughs> fun scrolling. All right. Our last one, our last question for today, just to kind of get a little, know a little bit more about the people in the room and maybe some of your aspirations or ideas. Um, this one has to do with personality tests. It's a poll. So if you are allowed to participate, please go ahead and do that. And just a nod from you, Dr. McHugh, if you can see the poll. Oh, I see people responding to the poll. So that's great. What personality tests have you taken? And there's a few options on there. All right. We've got about about 70% participation. So in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. Oh, great question in the chat, Dr. McHugh. Maybe we can share some of these personality uh, tests in our follow-up email. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share the results. Looks like of those that responded, about 90% have done the Myers-Briggs, Dr. McHugh. Um, I noticed DISC also. That's a great one as well. I noticed that in the chat. Here's a couple of the other, about two or three uh, people who did respond to the poll have tried the other personality tests. Wow. Thank you so much, everyone. It is so great to have such an interactive group. And I'd like to briefly introduce our speaker today, Dr. Sarah McHugh. Dr. Sarah McHugh has focused her career on economics, empowerment, and online higher education for United Nations and international NGO initiatives. She's also a social entrepreneur, having created an online mentoring initiative funded by Elon Musk and a global online university for the quantitative finance industry. She's an adjunct faculty member at NU, and among other places, a researcher and an author. Thank you so much, Dr. McHugh, for sharing your thoughts on ways to establish oneself as a thought leader, and I will pass this over to you. Thank you so much for inviting me, Emily. Um, it is a joy to collaborate with you, um, and it is so good to be with you all today because so often students will say to me, I want to make a difference in the lives of others, and I want to change the way things are, but how do I develop myself as a thought leader? And first, it's important to define who is a thought leader. And a thought leader is an expert, an authority, has a highly formed um, opinions about a specific field. And as the term implies, a thought leader often um, thinks about, uh, I'm sorry, a thought leader leads others in thinking about a given topic. For young professionals, a thought leader is inspired about bringing change in individuals, in families, in communities, in the workplace, in our health, in policy, in our relationships. Thought leaders are everywhere. They are deliberate and they have a plan to become deeply knowledgeable about subjects that bring passion and joy into one's career. Passion to change the way things are and joy in sharing that knowledge. And so this is my best advice as you think of specific ways to establish yourself as a leader in your career. These are the things I wish someone had encouraged me to do as I set out in my career that I will share with you now. So to start, I would suggest find two or three conferences that interest you. And once you've attended a few of them, volunteer to moderate or serve on a panel. Look at the attendee list in advance and ask, ask to meet a few people during the conferences. Also, organizations are increasingly holding virtual conferences to limit travel time and expense. So it's just even easier to find those conferences nowadays. Also, um, be deliberate in how you will expand your network of professionals on LinkedIn. Start by identifying a few position titles that are of interest to you. Find people who hold those positions and then send a request to meet. And once you've connected, observe their career path through the years so you can read the books they're reading, join the association they're a member of, and just know what they're thinking and doing. 
And so um, Emily is going to now share the LinkedIn resources offered by National University. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. McHugh. So NU has partnered with LinkedIn Learning, and I know in our chat, some people said they use it, some people said they haven't used it. But our partnership for you as an NU student, staff or faculty, you can use the LinkedIn Learning uh, resources to provide, and part of the resources provide on-demand video learning platform where you can help develop and enhance skills. Within the LinkedIn Learning, there's over 16,000 courses and learning paths taught by industry experts, as Dr. McHugh pointed to. If you are a class-based student, you can check out the student support under your student resources section of your portal and access the Graduate Studies Support Center. If you're a one-to-one -one student, you can access the Resource Center and get to the Graduate Studies Support Center. Once you're at in the Graduate Studies Support Center, you'll see a tab that's called LinkedIn Learning. And go to how to access LinkedIn Learning. I'm going to provide you a link uh, in the follow-up email to make it really easy for you to access that link. But you can choose from the library of courses and use these free resources to learn skills, promote yourself, or earn a certificate. And I highly recommend checking them out. With that, I will turn this over to Dr. McHugh. I absolutely love LinkedIn learning. And when I was a young professional, I would have just loved to be a kid in the candy shop and just explore everything that's available on, on LinkedIn learning. And this segues into um, become an expert in the field that interests you. When I started out, I wanted to know everything about international business, the process of exporting laws, and policies, finding new markets, the best universities teaching international business. I was insatiable, insatiable in my curiosity. And when you become fascinated by a field that interests you, I would suggest request those informational interviews with experts. Set up Google alerts on these people, the key organizations and the topics that are covering your interests. And write opinion pieces for your LinkedIn page. They don't have to be long, but they should be informed and passionate. And this is so important to establish yourself as a thought leader. Last year, I became deeply interested in the issue of degraded plastic that we are ingesting and inhaling that is contributing to increases in young adult cancer, heart attack, and stroke. I did not know anything about it. And so I would set Google alerts on the word nanoplastics so I could read scientific research that is released near daily on the subject. I found about 100 experts on plastic replacement policy and thought leaders in business, government, and health. And now I'm interacting with them on LinkedIn. And I'm also sharing my knowledge by speaking to groups of moms and athletes and even the medical community who, like me, didn't know about this human health crisis. And so deeply research the topics that interest you is just so important. And Emily is now going to share how the university library can help you with your own research. And as you can see, Dr. McHugh used her experience of being interested in nanoplastics. And so what did she do? She, she did the research. She's trying to learn and gather more information so she can become an expert in that, in that field. And so to become an expert in your field, you need to develop a knowledge of the specific thing that you wanna become an expert in, right? So part of that is being interested in that particular subject. Now the NU library is an absolute gold mine for you as a student. And I wanted to point your attention to a few items. There are a few um, resources. These are different sessions that the library offers. The learn the library session. And again, I will include these as links for you in our follow-up email. But if you're looking at how do I do some research in my field, the Learn the Library might be a great place to start. The Find Scholarly Articles is another resource for our NU students. Now that one is gonna be just whether you're undergraduate or graduate, 
everyone's going to need to find scholarly articles supporting whatever um, research topic or assignment they are working on. So that might be a great one to attend or learn more about the NU Library Services for that. If you're a doctoral student, you might want to check out the research consultation options in um, the library. The research consultations are live one-to-one -one sessions and they provide an in-depth, high-level and customized research assistance with a reference librarian. I know myself as a doctoral student absolutely utilize the research consultations um, because it takes a village. <laughs> And I, I absolutely loved getting some help um, from one of our great librarians, Amanda Bazette, and among others that I worked with um, once I picked a topic that I was very interested in doing for my dissertation. So I would say that is a deeper level um, option that you have in the NU library, but I wanted to kind of show you these three items that you might want to take a look at in the NU library so you can become an expert in whatever topic you're trying to do research on. And with that, I'm gonna turn this back to Dr. McHugh. And, and to your point, Emily, as you go through your research, and I found this as I was going through nanoplastics, that these thought leaders will just naturally occur to you that you want to reach out, you want to know more about them. And so I would recommend um, you know, spending just time online. Go to YouTube. It's a great place to find updates on these um, experts on, on any topic. And again, on LinkedIn to find the experts in the field and the organizations that are really focused on this issue. And you can track their achievements, their opinions, the new programs that they're developing, the new initiatives, the new positions, meaning um, their stance or their opinion on an issue that they will publish in a press release. Um, and so I wanted to also talk about research interesting jobs um, by looking at the position titles that your thought leaders currently hold and have held, read those job descriptions at organizations that you may have never considered, maybe in another country, in Silicon Valley, in the United Nations, in the financial sector. Maybe there's a startup out there um, in medical or environmental technology or in an industry for which you have that deep passion or interest. And once you've found those organizations, let's say there's 10 to 12 of them that you might think might be an interesting or a fulfilling place to work, I would suggest creating a profile so that you can get those alerts from their open job section. Um, and so, for sure, I would encourage you to use the university career services that Emily will now discuss. Thank you so much, Dr. McHugh. Yes, the career services team is, is again, another resource for our NU students, right? And they are a team that's our dedicated career experts at NU to serve as your trusted partner, providing personalized support every step of the way. So whether you're a current student, recent graduate, or taking your first steps into the professional realm, or maybe you're an experienced professional seeking new horizons, the career service team offers an array of specialized services and solutions designed to meet your unique aspirations. Might be great to talk to some of those career service representatives about how to shine on LinkedIn and other professional areas as well too. I will again include, include these resources, these links um, in our follow-up email. I definitely recommend taking a look at their services and I'm gonna pass this back to Dr. McHugh. I have to be candid that I um, was in my graduate program at George Washington University, and I really didn't know where I wanted to, you know, kind of focus my career path. So I went to the career services office and I said, what kinds of internships do you have? What kind of fellowships are out there? What kinds of um, just kind of temporary jobs so that I can try out a position? And they were phenomenal. And I know that National University is so good as well. So highly recommend the career services team. Um, and so speaking of jobs, and as you try to find that that dream job, right, I would recommend um, creating job alerts on these titles that sound great to you. And so once you've identified those three to four dream job titles, 
You can set up alerts that indeed LinkedIn and other job sourcing platforms will send you daily or weekly so that you can regularly look at the job descriptions of positions that would be ideal for you. And I tell students often that if you feel you're not qualified, just note a list of the skills that you need to acquire. And so then to seek these additional responsibilities, you can obtain these skills by asking your management if you could undertake a task or develop an initiative that will give you the experience you need to develop or advance and acquire that, acquire that skill. So I promise you, most leaders are gonna want you to stretch to achieve these experiences. And so Emily is gonna give a personal example of asking to use Storyline to achieve additional responsibilities in her current role of academic learning specialist. Thank you so much. Dr. McHugh. And I, I just wanted to share this because it's, it's just two quick little um, personal, I guess, professional experiences. As you all know, I'm an adult learner as well, too. Um, and I understand how nerve wracking it can be to go to, into the unknown, right? But as I was looking at other potential future positions, I thought to myself, storyline, this is a great way. Um, it's a it's a platform where you can develop training materials and as a trainer in my current role and other things that I'd like to do in the future, I thought that this would be a great way um, to kind of just gain those skills. Now, that being said, I'm not saying that seeking additional responsibilities will go always go as planned, right? But we don't know until we try, right? So I, I wanted to develop this skill set. So I simply went to my leader and I asked, hey, you know, I'd like to grow my skill set in Storyline. And the initial ask was met very warmly, providing me with the software that I needed to grow that skill set. But from there comes the hard work, right? So I needed to look at trainings or tutorials of how to use Storyline. I also asked other colleagues who have used the platform as well too and gained their insight into that, their expertise into that platform. I just had to get in there and get my hands dirty, so to speak. So trust me, it wasn't pretty at first and I've grown so much in a year's time frame. but I look forward to knowing that that skill set is now something that's in my tool belt and I can use it in my current role or potentially wherever I go in the future. From a professional standpoint, I know we talked about maybe attending conferences. That's obviously also very important in my field too. So I took the jump and I went and uh, went to um, put in a proposal to present at the Online Learning Consortium where I got my first opportunity to do that in a virtual space. And in next week, I'll be going to Orlando to present at OLC in person um, to discuss strategies for student success. So I guess the long point of my story of these professional experiences, we don't know until we try, right? So I'm encouraging you to take that step, follow these tips that Dr. McHugh is mentioning so you can propel yourself in your personal or professional journey. With you that, know, I will turn that over to Dr. McHugh. It, 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 this is so true. Um, try, try, try are three of my favorite words right next to ask, ask, ask. And so another suggestion is to spend the time deeply understanding the types of jobs that may be of interest to you. So again, find where the organizations are listing their job opportunities outside of their website, where most of the jobs are posted, right? And then create that profile, sign up for their alerts, set up um, those job alerts on LinkedIn and apply, apply, apply. Because if you don't, someone else is going to get that job, right? You have a 100% guarantee that you're not going to get the job if you don't apply. And so um, these are, um, this is a list of posting sites that I'm happy to send if you connect with me on LinkedIn that show the incredible diversity of jobs, both in the U.S. and outside of the U.S., in nonprofit organizations, international intergovernmental or organizations known as NGOs. Um, these are foundations and philanthropic organizations that, that give money to social impact um, endeavors and initiatives. 
the United Nations. There's just an incredible array of jobs available within the UN system. The World Bank is a United Nations organization, an entity that probably has as many employees as the full UN system. And of course, there's the private sector. And this is a list of the United Nations organizations that regularly post their jobs available. My best advice is to look at this list, register with a few of them to receive their job alerts, and just don't stop applying until you have found the job of your dreams. And, and I tell students the best way to build your network is by requesting 15 minute meetings with thought leaders. You can find them on LinkedIn, send them a very brief one paragraph message where you quickly share your background, your ideal job, and say that you'd be so appreciative to meet for 15 minutes for career advice. At the end of your meeting, of course, thank them profusely for their time and then ask them for the names of two to three people that you should contact on LinkedIn. You do this for a few years until you've built a network of 100 or so key influencers. And I would encourage you not to be afraid to reach to the heads and the VPs of these organizations. People love to talk about themselves. They love to share their career path and they like to share how with you how they got to where they are now, right? And so um, I would also encourage you to identify a mentor um, who holds a job that is fascinating to you. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I find your career so interesting and your leadership is so inspiring. And I would be so appreciative if you might mentor me in strategy, leading teams, business development, public speaking, international marketing, or whatever skill that you would love to develop. And so you have these brief, brief bursts of mentoring on a very specific topic that doesn't seem um, too time consuming, both for you and for your your mentor. And so I would encourage you to plan to have multiple mentors in your career as you get that thought, ooh, you know, I don't have experience or I need to be better in that particular area. Coaching a young professional is important. Um, so I would like to remind you to keep in mind that you will need to be a mentor to someone who is new in their career. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if someone hadn't agreed to mentor me. And it's so important to deeply listen when someone's talking about their career goals, to be that coach that everyone needs at points in their career. And it's so important to use the resources at National University's Academic Success Center, including the Alumni Navigators Program that Emily is now going to talk about. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. McHugh. I appreciate that. Um, this ties right into the mentor, um, the coaching young professional aspect as well too. The, the, the Academic Success Center is really a wealth of resources. The ASC supports students in developing written communication and quantitative reasoning like math or statistics skills. And they provide support in the areas of research methodology, design, and analysis. There's a ton of self-directed resources on there. There's individual and group sessions with the academic success coaches and the alumni navigators who are also available through the Academic Success Center. They offer so many different types of support structures for you. So the people who work in the center truly do care about supporting you and your academic success. So I must say, I highly encourage you to reach out. Um, I know that it takes the step of starting the conversation, but I do hope you step into the Academic Success Center, reach out to those coaches, and see how those supplemental support systems can help you thrive. With that, I'm going to turn this right back on to Dr. McHugh. Um, I can't more highly encourage you all to use these resources because right now this is the time for you to explore, to go deep, to ideate, and to emerge as better for it. So please take an hour a week to explore and use these resources. 
And I also encourage um, you all to seek new experiences by uh, considering a virtual or in-person internship or ask for that short-term appointment with a company or organization to explore their culture or their approach to HR, technology, inter international business or international economic development, for example. Internships are great because you can often end up with a job offer in the organization that's right for you, or you can depart quickly if you know it's not a good fit for you. Um, I, I left an internship after one day being in the commissioner's office of a very large U.S. government agency. I was placed in a gorgeous old executive office building in Washington, D.C. I could see the U.S. Capitol from my window. It was plush, plush, plush. But I quickly learned I didn't want to work for the Internal Revenue Service. So I went back again to the Student Career Center and I did the same at a lobbying firm. I quickly knew that I didn't want to be a lobbyist. Then I was at the National Association of Home Builders. Uh, they build luxury homes. And then I found my dream internship and my job where I ended up working through my master's degree program, writing speeches for the United States Trade Ombudsman that set me on a path ultimately working for the United Nations and the World Bank. And so just as internships are such a great way to see if you are going to enjoy a particular career path, so many students have achieved the jobs of their dreams through volunteering for a local or a national organization. And you may wish to look at fellowships in international affairs, international development, international business, um, including the Princeton in Africa, Princeton in Asia, um, Princeton in Latin America fellowships are, are examples of just one of many, many fellowships that are out there where they give you highly responsible temporary jobs in these regions in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, and they've been around for decades. Um, so as you plan to pos position yourself as a thought leader, I would encourage you to apply for speaking opportunities at conferences, uh, research and publish articles on social media, be purposeful in planning the content that you're going to post on various social media channels. And by that, I mean, find a few topics you want to be known for and post about these issues. When you feel you have expertise and experience in a particular area, I would encourage you to have the courage and confidence to write a book or a series of articles or serve on an advisory board of an organization um, that's of interest to you, where you can also post about this experience that gives the organization the visibility as well as showcases your experience in a volunteer leadership role. And um, for sure, consider obtaining an additional degree at some point. It's increasingly common for young professionals to have at least one master's degree, especially with the proliferation of online higher education. And, you know, I, I say this to students all the time, please consider a PhD to explore in depth the policy, a program, or an intractable issue that desperately needs a solution. Um, and a PhD makes it easier to teach at universities. It's not required for some programs, but some programs do require a PhD. Um, most universities now do have online programs, and so you may wish to apply to teach so that you can share your knowledge and experiences and stay current. If you don't feel that you have the experience to teach now, keep, it in, um, keep teaching in mind once you have reached your mid or late career, as I did. I was so busy in my career, I did not have time to, to teach, and, and I have a little more time now. Um, in terms of learning your own values and your own strengths, I love the these um, Clifton Strengths Finder, the MBTI they call it, uh, the Ultimate Personality Test 2.0 is a new one on me that I hadn't heard of and it's becoming my favorite. I also love the um, VIA Character Strength Survey for more deeply understanding yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, and your motivations. Um, knowing yourself absolutely will help you as you become a more influential leader through the years. And make sure that you take these tests every five to 10 years. You're going to be surprised how much you change and how much you do stay the same. 
Um, I think it's important to um, believe in yourself, the knowledge, the values, and skills you have already obtained through the school of life. There's never going to be another you. Be confident and aware of your strengths and your weaknesses, and then go for the life and the positions that will set your heart on fire. Again, if you don't apply, it's 100% guaranteed someone else is going to take that job, that experience, that seat. So remember a little confidence in oneself goes a long way. Um, so next, I, I tell my students um, in international business and international affairs, um, while being fluent in another language is not necessarily a requirement for all international jobs, knowing a language is, is imperative if you focus on a particular country or a region. I absolutely love Duolingo for its daily encouragement and high energy ways to learn a language. And it's very sticky. You, you constantly are going back to it. I have a 70 something old friend who has a three year day streak and my 10 year old is obsessed with not losing his now year and a half day streak. Um, so as you progress in your thought leadership, it's so important to stay curious and be a relentless advocate for change that is going to benefit societies, whether at a local, state, national, or even global level. And regarding curiosity, I have always felt that it, um, curiosity can be neatly fit into a bell curve, showing those who are interested in the past, most are interested in the present, and some are interested in the future. Of course, we're all interested in the past, present, and future, but most of us spend our time in one era. And I have always been interested in what life will be like in the future and how to prepare for it. And I focused my career in advocacy on ways to use technology innovations for the greatest benefit to humanity. And the current pro problems and the technology solutions in which I'm focused are um, what I call AI everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, AI for Economic Development. Um, I co-authored a, a March 2024 United Nations publication on the use of AI for business, um, AI for universities, um, both applying it within the university system and ensuring critical thinking among students. I'm going to be candid. There's a complete freak out within universities on how we can most effectively use AI while students are still pushing themselves to learn as much as they can. And I'm also focused on open AI um, as a Trojan horse that is absorbing mass amounts of intellectual property into chat GPT. Um, I'm also fascinated with um, cities transforming. Um, nearly a third of the workforce is working from home. I'm an advocate for affordable housing and human connection spaces as massive square footage of office space is vacated. So I, I track developments in this space. Higher education is one of the last sectors that's going to be disrupted that will result in many universities closing, merging, and creating global, uh, not national, online degree programs. And we need lowest cost, highest quality online degrees for a billion people who don't have access to higher education. So I've become a thought leader in this space, mostly to bring education where it is so needed in developing countries. Um, I mentioned there's just so much to say about this issue, but suffice to say that most aren't aware that we need to get rid of the plastics in our human body. And it is imperative that we ensure platforms are held accountable as publishing platforms. So I speak and I write often on this issue. And as we march toward worldwide universal connectivity, we need to ensure positive societal growth once connectivity is achieved. So I'm giving you all the things that I'm currently tracking and trying to um, share my opinion and state, you know, use my voice to help with these solutions that we're so desperately trying to, to solve. Um, so some of the ways that I stay current and connected, um, I, as a young professional, I attended as many conference sessions as possible for deep knowledge 
and awareness of an issue. And now I, I rarely attend sessions, but I listen intently while I'm talking with people. I do more listening than talking. Um, in my consulting, I focus on client problems, solutions, and trends. I read daily Google alerts on various topics to keep me current and informed. Um, I track what thought leaders are saying and doing on LinkedIn. I speak and regularly lecture on, on these topics that, that I've shared with you. And, and I love to teach in adjunct roles in tech at Georgetown, um, business at National University, leadership and strategy at George Washington University, and international business at American University. And I'm not teaching, you know, full time, but I'm doing this because I want to see how, how universities are providing online higher education. And I also want to share my experience and knowledge with students who you all are the next generation of, of thought leaders. And so finally, I encourage you to stay in touch with your professors, your classmates, your coworkers, and those who gave you a chance in the workplace. Those, are, are, those who are passionate about their careers love to know about, celebrate, and coach younger professionals along their career path. So please keep in touch with them. And every time you meet someone, send a request to connect on LinkedIn and use LinkedIn to learn and network. It's really a phenomenal resource. And so with that, um, Emily and I wish you all the very best in all that you will do. And so over to you for final thoughts, Emily. Dr. McHugh, thank you so much for sharing examples of different um, topics that you're interested in and all of the resources and all of the strategies that you have used to become a thought leader in those spaces. And I, I hope that some of these strategies uh, are going to be helpful to our audience members as they consider what's important to them and what they would like to be experts in and become thought leaders in. I want to take a pause right now and just see if we have any questions. Um, I didn't, I did see one thing in the chat. I noticed in the chat someone had mentioned that they would like to see the posting or the, the uh, so sorry, let me start over. I noticed in the chat, someone asked if they could see the slide for all of the different um, job posting boards. You will get access to that in the follow-up email. I would happily, happily send that over to you in a PDF form so you'll have access to it. And, and just some comments in the chat Someone's happy to know that they're on track. And I really hope if any anybody takes anything away from this, reaching out, as Dr. McHugh said, ask, ask, ask. Um, if you have a question, please feel free to be, oh, Dr. McHugh, here's one. Um, yeah, please feel free to post any questions in the chat. We'll go ahead and take those. But um, Dr. McHugh, did you cover suggestions on how to establish a mentor? Do you have any thoughts on that? That's such a good question. Um, I created an online mentoring mechanism that Elon Musk had funded. You had mentioned that at the top. And as I was thinking through, how can we make this a very worthwhile experience, both for the mentor and the protege? And we, we simply um, said that you have to have very specific goals that are very easy to obtain so that you can kind of build on that relationship one by one. Could you, you know, please just take me through your career path and then let me share with you my ideas and then maybe we can come up with a career path for me. Step one. Step two, um, you know, I, I really don't um, feel comfortable speaking in public. Could you coach me on that? step two, right? And then you just go to the to the next step. Um, I think also a lot of young professionals I find are intimidated by the thought of even just reaching out, right? And so um, I would be very real 
when you do reach that pot potential mentor and, and say to them, you know, I, I never had a mentor before. I really don't know what's involved, but I do know that I need some professional coaching. And I would be just honored and thrilled if you would spend, you know, a, an hour or two a month with me until I, you know, really address that issue that I think you can help me with. Thank you so much. I appreciate that strategy. Someone had mentioned in the chat, um, I wanted to know if you have any idea why recruiter shows immense interest in you and then suddenly there are no responses from the employer. Who should, who should you um, be interviewing with is the question. If you have any thoughts, Dr. McHugh, you're welcome to share them. Well, you know, the first part of the question, I do have an idea why a recruiter shows immense interest in you and then suddenly there's no response. That's just bad manners, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I tell students often that when someone reaches out to you with a question, hey, recruiter, what's the status? You know, there's a moral obligation to respond to that person. I realize that we are all so busy, but when you put your heart and soul into applying for a position and you get a lot of, you know, good vibes and good responses, and then they go silent, that has nothing to do with the applicant. It's all on the recruiter. Thank you so much for your, your thought on that, Dr. McHugh. I don't see any other questions that are coming up in the chat at this time. But I know we've covered a lot, and we are very hopeful that um, Dr. McHugh's strategies and tips or suggestions on how to establish yourself as a thought leader, coupled with the resources that are at your fingertips at NU, um, we are hoping that we're giving you some 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 gold to put into your into your wallet book, and that you're able to start like using it when you need it, uh, when the time is right for you. So um, I think without any other additional information, just Dr. McHugh, thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts. I really do appreciate it. And to our participants, oh my goodness, you were so engaged and interactive and we're just so grateful for that as well too. And you gave us some great questions here at the end. So keep an eye out uh, for my follow-up email and uh, just a little Teaser in the future, Dr. McHugh is coming back in 2025 to do another presentation for our Skill Up series. Um, so keep an eye out for that and more information to come as we move into, I can't believe I'm saying it, 2025. <laughs> so <laughs> until the next time, I really hope everyone has a great rest of their day and uh, everyone take care. Bye.